top one to financial advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller, and we're here to talk about the stock market. In particular, I want to give you my six stocks that you should consider investing in. Now, this is not the most complete list in the world. The complete list is in the Investor's Toolkit. Those of us who are members or students in the course, you got the entire list um, updated earlier this afternoon. Also, if you follow me on public and you have the app, then you also saw, um, excuse me, you see what I have now. And you also saw a few updates that I made for some stocks that I bought now. And then I will go back and reevaluate in January. So I have some great news um, for how we do, how I create this watch list, kind of give you some, some of the back end, show you what we got, show you what happened and how much money we made or lost on the last watch list. And we'll, we'll take it from there. So feel free to ask any questions that you have right now this is your opportunity with your phone to hit the share button because everybody always asks of the 5,000 stocks that are out there what stocks do you like what stocks should you consider buying which one of these are quote unquote safe which are the one of these are going to help me to make money these are the stocks that you want to consider I say consider with emphasis because not every stock is going to work for everybody. I think of the stocks I'm going to show you, there's going to be some for some conservative investors, some that want to be aggressive, and we can kind of get into that. So these are stocks that you should consider researching. I'm not saying you should go and buy these because every investor is different. However, some of these stocks I do own. If you're on public, you know for a fact that I've had it. If you are students in my course, the Investor's Toolkit, as you see in the background, you have all of this. I think there are close to 50, somewhere between 15 and 17 stocks total that I like right now, including two REITs that I do have. For those who don't know, REITs are real estate investment trust. We can get into that, but they're essentially mutual funds, but for properties instead of just single companies. All right, so go ahead, hit the share button. You want to share it for two reasons. One, want to grow and show more people how to start investing. Two, you want to be able to come back in this in your memories and say, oh, look, these are the stocks I talked about. And a year, six months from now, you're like, man, huh, he was right. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things about that and why I think those are important. Now, go ahead and hit the share button. I'm going to tell you about the Investor's Toolkit right quick. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull up my Facebook app and pull up the video so I can watch in the comments and I can also share to my peoples as well as you should be doing. All right. So give me one quick second. All right. So there we go. So any questions, pop them in the chat. I'll be able to go back and forth as usual. Uh, we want to make sure we get as many people in here as possible because I only do this every three months. Um, unless you're in my student group, you get this every month and you can email me and tell you more. Um, all right. So, as we get started, the Investor's Toolkit, my premier course, it breaks down everything step by step by step. How do you start investing? What accounts do you need? How much should you be investing? What stocks to invest in? When to buy? When to sell? It is my premier course. Everybody loves it. But it's the place that you want to be because in a time like COVID where the market is doing all types of crazy things, you need step-by-step -step guidance. You need someone who has been there, someone who has done it, and you need a way to test out those investments before you spend your own money on it. What you don't want to do is think that this stock is going to be great and then you do it and then you lose money, especially if that's for creating generational wealth or just trying to grow your wealth in general. Don't make those mistakes when you don't have to. You can learn from my mistakes and learn from my expertise by doing the Investor's Toolkit. There's a discount code right now. It's invest321 that is in the description above. You can save $200 by using that. The course is normally 500. So I'm trying to help you out now. Use a discount code, save you a little bit of money, but you want to start the course as soon as you can. And then obviously you get this list I'm going to give you. I update it every single month. So this is your turn to go through, look at the list, see what works for you, see what does it and invest and move forward in that way. All right, great. Now, go ahead and hit the share button. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I do on Instagram, I'm actually gonna post this on Instagram tomorrow. So because you're here, you're actually getting it before my Instagram group. Um, I create and put out this watch list every quarter. So it's every three months. Did it in January, did it in, 
as I'm trying to do the math for some reason, did it in January, did it in April, and now I'm doing it in July. We'll do it again in, um, in September, and then we'll do it again in December. And again, we never know what's going to happen. Um, I didn't pull up the first quarter watch list, but you can go on Instagram and see that one. Uh, during the first quarter, if I'm remembering the numbers correctly, this is back in January when I created the list. So in January, this is before COVID. We had Netflix. Uh, we had a, a bunch of different stocks at that point in time. That list lost money. However, the entire stock market lost money. So we only lost about four, close to 5%. The entire stock market, the S&P 500, lost 20%. So we did better than the market. We will take that, especially in a time like this. For Q2, this one was released around the 1st of April. Here was the list, and we had talked about this yesterday, which is kind of funny because someone said on here that they loved Dollar General. Dollar General was on the list in April. We had Walmart, we had Netflix, we had Microsoft, Bristol Myers Squibb, and Nvidia. Um, these stocks that you see at the bottom, these stocks combined, and I just split the money evenly for this particular list, these stocks combined made 22% from April to essentially today. That's good because we beat the stock market, which was at 20.52%. That's pretty good. We beat the market only by a little bit, but again, it all depends on how you shift the money. You put more money in Microsoft and more money in Netflix, you would have made a lot more. Again, we just split these evenly. You can do what you want, you know, based on how you are as an investor. But we just split these evenly and we got 22% yeah, in, in the watch list and just 20% in the stock market. So our list beat the market, which is great. All right, now uh, we have one question. Does the perfect portfolio course include your quarterly picks? It is not. The perfect portfolio course is more like a an autopilot where you just, you invest in what we have in the course and you just set it and forget it. The uh, investor's toolkit is a little more active, so it includes the perfect portfolio course plus individual stocks like this. And that's a monthly list that I update, obviously, every month. All right, now, this is Q3's list. This one just came out today. I worked on this last night and earlier this morning. Here's what we have. Dollar General, it was a good stock for pretty much for the vast port part of this year. We are keeping that in this list. Kroger, I substituted Kroger for Walmart. Walmart just wasn't growing enough for me. Kroger has in comparison. So we took out, and this is what I do with my money as well. I use a six month period. We do quarterly so we can kind of talk about it a little more, um, but you get the exact same effect. So we took out Walmart, not really working, not really doing anything for me. So we took out Walmart and put Kroger in instead. We are keeping Netflix. And it's just interesting how this thing has played out. We said that Netflix back in January was a quality stock. We knew back over the last 10 years, Netflix had been one of the best performing stocks. And then yesterday, we had just talked about how Netflix was investing or, or putting $100 million into black organizations, which is great. It also happens to make us a lot of money. So we're doing Netflix. We're keeping Microsoft. I'm throwing in Equinix. It is a REIT that pretty much owns data centers. What that means is, and I'm just giving you a super broad example, Places like Amazon, places like AT&T, Verizon, they need a place to, for their servers to store all the information. Equinix kind of owns the land that houses those places. That's the easiest way to explain it. But they are a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust. It's a way that I can make money off of real estate without actually having to you know, manage it. Um, so that one has done extremely well this year. Again, we're, we're adding it to this list. I believe my students have had it for at least two months, but wanted to throw that one on this one. And then we're also keeping NVIDIA. So you can see, and I've talked about this before, right now, the two industries, there are three, three places that are really growing the stock market right now. Technology, which we all know, Apple's, Amazon's, all of those, that's what's pushing the economy. Those are the hot stocks right now. If you're trying to make money, you want to be in that space. Then you also have healthcare. Um, again, it's not on this list because I, I, I'm not putting out the entire list for free when I got people who are like paying and dedicated, but also they have more information. So they know which ones to pick and choose. I'm just abbreviating this because obviously it's on Instagram too. So you only got but so much space. Um, so we got healthcare, we got technology, and then we have what we call like consumer goods or they call it 
uh, durable consumer durables or they call it weird things. Basically, where do you get your basic stuff? Where do you buy your toilet paper? Where do you buy your groceries? That's where Kroger and Dollar General are. So those are the three, I think I said two. Those are the three industries right now that you're probably going to make the most money. Notice that you're not seeing those travel stocks. You're not seeing oil stocks, which people ask me a lot about, and you're not, you don't see airline stocks. Because right now, that doesn't mean they're not making any money, but that's not what's driving the market now. That's not which, what stocks are moving right now. These are the ones that are doing that. Um, you can see, again, we made money last quarter by using this exact same process. If the stock is good, we keep it. If the stock isn't as good or doesn't meet the, the bar, then it has to go. As you can see, I kicked out Bristol Myers Squibb, I kicked out Walmart and replaced them with two other people on the team. And this is a process that I use that is super consistent. So I, I invest in what I invest in. I come back and say, did you do the job? Did you beat the S&P 500? Did you make me money or no? I'm not going in there every single day and tripping myself up and getting emotional. I go in, I have a process that obviously we detail here. You can scroll down here. What type of investor? We know what type of investor I am. And then we talk about how to find those perfect investments. And that's how I curate this list. And then for Facebook and Instagram, we tailor it down just so it's something that fits, something that makes sense. So our list right now for this quarter, and what we'll do come September 1st, or you know September 1st or August 30th, we'll come back and we'll see how well did this list do from today through August 30th. And hopefully we'll beat the market again. It's hard to beat the market consistently, but that is our job if we're trying to invest in individual stocks. So again, right now we've got Dollar General. Dollar General have been doing very, very well actually over the last few years, but especially now. Kroger has done well this year and have done well for about the last two years or so. Netflix is great, clearly. Microsoft is great. Equinix is very good, and so is NVIDIA. Um, these are places that I think are going to continue to grow your money aggressively. Again, it does not fit for everybody. So you need to figure out, is this where you want to be? Is this how you want to grow your money? And then you can choose tons of different apps to do this with. Public is one of my favorites. We've talked about it before. I can put the link in the bio. You'll get like a free stock if you sign up through my link. But you get to follow me and see exactly what I invest in. You will see that the vast majority of these I own myself. Um, as well as a few others. So you get to actually see like, oh, this is what he's investing in. He actually meant that or not. Um, so you get to, I have some skin in the game. I'm just not say, here saying stuff for the sake of saying it. Um, so Publix, one of my favorite. Uh, you can also do Cash App, Fidelity, others. We can kind of get into that if you guys have any questions. But again, here's my list for now. I'm telling y'all up front, this is what I like. This is what I'm viewing. Um, you saw that Netflix hit an all, a new all-time high today. Amazon hit an all-time high today as well. Um, I'm a big fan of Amazon, just not on this list. Again, this is a shortened list, not the complete list. Um, so I'll tell you now, I'm telling you now, because y'all going to look at me later and be like, well, what should I invest it in? Should I keep investing? I'm telling you now, the answer is yes. And if I had to put money down, which I have today, and you can see on public, these are the places that I would go. All right, so I'm gonna uh, answer a few questions if you have any. Uh, we talked about the perfect portfolio course. Uh, I own the bottom three of the list. Great, so that's that's good. Um, again, these are these are some that I've owned for a little bit for at least six months or so. I think I think Microsoft I have for a bit longer. Nvidia I'm relatively new on. Equinix is new. It's like my second read that I've ever done. Um, want to get more into reads. But it's also like tech and real estate related. So it kind of fits in both of those boats. So yeah, and, and you've seen, because you own it, you know how well that particular stock has done or that read has done. Um, so great on you, that's good. Um, also, if you're new, like again, these are just places that I think you should look into. Um, if you own some of them, great. If you own none, that's fine. These are not the only things ever that are out there. Um, you know, if you, you can own some, none, all, completely up to you. All right. Next one, my top five, Dollar General, Kroger, Apple, Clorox, CLX, and Netflix. That's a good list. That's a good list. Um, I was looking at Clorox earlier today when I was making this, and I mean, it's, it's pretty good. Um, it just didn't happen to make my list, but Kroger is good. 
Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, any other questions, comments, let me know. Um, but I like to track these. You may see me on Instagram or even on here where I say, oh, look, it's at an all-time high. Um, or look, it grew by X percent. We saw that a lot with Microsoft for the last few months as well. And we will likely see that at least in the near future. Um, but again, super simple process. If you want to learn exactly, you know, for example, if you are a conservative investor, someone that says, I don't need to have the next Amazon. I just need something to make me decent money, but it's not going to lose me a lot of money that I call that a conservative investor. So that conservative investor would probably say they want more Kroger, more Dollar General, maybe Equinix. They wouldn't do the others because those are more tech, more aggressive. That suits some people better than others. You have other people that say, I don't want none of the, the you know, the basic stuff. I want the fast cards. I want something that's going to grow a lot. That person may say Netflix, Microsoft, N NVIDIA, and maybe Equinix. Equinix can probably fit in both of those spaces. Again, how we came up with this list, all of that was found here in this quiz. So it tells you what type of investor you are, and then I show you exactly how to create that watch list, how to go through and actually test out those investments to see like, is this good for you? And that is a very important thing um, because it's, everything is not for everybody. So you wanna make sure that you check out the Investor's Toolkit, use the discount code, save yourself $200, and um, continue investing and growing your wealth that way. It's the same step I use for myself, same stuff I, I use for my son. He'll be a millionaire here pretty soon by using this exact same technique. And the good thing about this, about the quarterly method, it doesn't matter quarterly, six months, as long as it's regular, um, you don't wanna do it more than that, is that I don't have to stress out about what happens if there's a second wave. If it happens, it happens. What happens if you know X, Y, and Z happens? The process is you invest, you choose the next time that you're gonna go through and invest. And this is what helped. I don't know if I would have kept Netflix if I were looking at it every single day. I don't know if I would have kept Dollar General if I was checking things every single day. Stay fake, stay focused, stay on the path and make sure that you have no more than four dates. You don't want to have more than four dates. So I like six months. You can do every three months, which is four times a year. Either or is fine, but you need to have a consistent process for whatever it is you're doing and whatever it is you're investing in. All right, so I am going to wait around and see if you guys have any other additional questions that you may have about um, this list or the last list. Um, again, Q1, we still had Netflix on Q1 as, as well as some other very good stocks, um, but we just do it quarter to quarter. So we just kind of compare those two and we'll see what happens. Um, again, the good thing is we beat the market by 2%, 2.5%. Again, has more than what you would have, would have gotten in the savings account. And this is even with the coronavirus and the second wave. Like, even though these things are happening, you still would have been fine. Um, so it's always good to, to know that depending on where you're investing your money, you can still make a lot of money. Um, and that's the important thing because people always ask, is now the time to invest? My answer is always yes. It depends on what you're investing in. That's going to be the big difference. All right, so I don't see any other questions. I'll wait another seven and a half seconds. Oh, there we go. How can you tell if you beat the S&P 500 over that time? That is a great question. So there's a few ways you can do that. Um, so I use a few tools that we talk about in the course that kind of show me what the combination of these investments did. I think that is the most precise way to do it. It's hard to explain in the video because I explained like a 45 minute video on how to use that particular tool. Um, so there is a way to do it. There is a site. We talk about it in the course. Um, the easy way or the simple way, but it doesn't give you the right math numbers. They call it geometric average. I don't want to get into the geometry of it. We don't have to do that. Um, but essentially what I would do is go to Yahoo Finance or in some investing apps, it'll uh, also show you that. But basically I say Dollar General between this day and this day made, you know, 50%, whatever it was. I can do the same thing with the S&P 500 and say between this day and this way, S&P 500 made X percent. So I can, I can look and easily see how Dow General did versus the S&P 500. We actually did this yesterday too. Um, if you go back and watch yesterday's video on Boeing, you'll see where I compared Boeing to the S&P 500 and we showed how well it did or how bad it did in comparison. So that is one way, but again, it doesn't give you the combination of those. So the combination of how these six stocks did 
versus the S&P 500. There's a lot of math involved. You don't have to do it if you have the tool. Um, but the short answer is we have the tool for that. The easy answer, Yahoo Finance, is another way that you can do that. Um, also, if you have Fidelity, if you log into your Fidelity app and hit like performance, it'll actually show you that too. So that's another good way to do it. Shout out to my friend, Brittany. <laughs> uh, she shared a video from the Live Richer Academy earlier. So, all right. So I'll take one or two more questions. I see another one. Yeah, definitely. So check out yesterday's video. It was on Boeing and I think um, South, no, I'm sorry. Yesterday's was about Netflix. So go to the one about the airlines. I talked about Boeing and a few others. Um, so Sheila asks Equinix or AMT. So Equinix is the one we have on our list. AMT is American Towers REIT. They own the land around the cell towers. So like T-Mobile, you know, they built the towers like in some random patch of grass. Somebody owns that grass and it's probably AMT. Um, so AMT is another REIT. I like it. I actually own both. So full transparency, I own both because I like both. Um, that's just how it is. <laughs> so I, I enjoy enough. I enjoy both enough to have both of them. So that's super simple answer there. Um, I don't know which one is performed better. I would assume they're relatively close, at least neck and neck. Um, so yeah, I, I own both. I, I looked at both and was like, Hey, they're both doing well. Why choose? Um, and that's the, that's the power of, you know, diversifying your investments a bit and having the ability to have fractional shares if they are too expensive to buy outright. So I've got me some Equinix. I got me some American Tower REIT, which is AMT, um, which she had brought up in the comments, which you guys can look up as well. Yep, see, Tyler on it. Like, I own both too. <laughs> exactly. Like, if, it's, if there are two great investments or more, as in this case, we have just six, shoot, why, why pick one? Um, so yeah. Thoughts on USRT. I don't know off the top of my head what USRT is. So let's find out USRT stock. And this is what I do sometimes. Like if I don't know it, I just, you know. All right, so this is a, what seems to be a REIT ETF. So this is interesting. Okay, so for those that don't know, number one, we are looking at this live, so I have no idea what this is. We're going to learn together for those that don't know. Um, two, we, we talked about what a REIT is. So this is like the educational fees, right? So a REIT stands for R-E-I-T, Real Estate Investment Trust. We kind of talked about it earlier. Essentially, it owns several properties together, just like a mutual fund would. So a regular mutual fund, let's say I had an, I don't know, an oil mutual fund is going to own Phillips 66 and Chevron and other stuff. So I don't have to go and buy each individual stock. This mutual fund owns them all together. I pay one price and I get I get exposure to all of them. A REIT is similar. Let's say I'm investing in apartment complexes. I don't have to do that. I can say I'm going to get this REIT and have apartment complexes in North Carolina and Oklahoma and Texas and California or a mall is one other one. Um, it owns random parts of land. So like the land area around cell towers. That's another one. So that's how REITs work. Now, this looks like a REIT ETF. So it is a box within a box. So an ETF is just like a mutual fund. So it owns several different types of things. So this ETF looks like, until we look at it, it looks like it holds several REITs. So it is basically a box within a box, which sounds pretty cool to me. So let's find out what it is. <laughs> So I'm going to fit, so I can do two things. I can check Yahoo Finance, which is my go-to, but I'm actually going to hit here because these are the people who make this ETF. And it could be an index fund, which again is basically saying, here are all the REITs in the U.S. We're just going to make our investment do that. All right. So what I'm going to do is hit, oh, here we go. Why USRT? Low cost, diversify, okay. Real estate investment trust, we talked about that. Okay. All right, so this is essentially, it is an index fund for REITs. So it's a box within a box 
within a box. Um, so essentially, because of all the reads out there, if you can't pick the right one or if you don't feel like choosing the right one, which is fine, a REIT will, this ETF seems to say we're just going to own all of them and it's going to perform like an average, the same, same way an index fund is. So instead of me picking every single stock, instead of me showing you what I think are the best stocks, I can get the index fund and it's going to own all of them. This essentially, to me, seems like it owns the vast majority or a good subsection of all the reads that are out there. And again, I'm looking at this at the same time. We could hit key facts. And it's how you kind of research certain things to see what's going on. So you would read that. We're going to hit key facts. So this is how much money is in it. Obviously, it's real estate. It's been around since 2007, so that's interesting. Okay, let's see characteristics. I want to see performance. That's what I want to see. How well has this done? All right, so this is what we want to see right here. All right, so I'll move this up. Now, this is concerning. So over the past one year, as of March 31st, it says, let me see if I can get a more, okay. Oh, oh. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Give me May 31st. All right, so this is a little bit concerning. All right, so what it's saying is over the past one year, it lost 14%, three years is down, five years is up, 10 years, it's made about 7%, which is decent. Um, since inception, since they, they started this in 2007, it's at 3% um, gain. So this is not encouraging, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And this, this is coming from like a higher level perspective. So I know that this, they started this ETF, this investment in 2007, which was the worst time for you to do it. And then we also are still in the middle of a weird pandemic, at least for the stock market. So you started off in the worst year and then you hit this. So that's probably why this inception number isn't all that great. Now we'll say that the stock market, at least to my recollection, it was up last year. So seeing that it's down 14%, just doesn't really do it for me. Um, if it was down that much by last year, I'm not super, super confident as to what it may do this year or how well it's done this year. So obviously these are more things that I would check out. How well has it done this year? How well does it compare to Equinix, another REIT or AMT, another REIT, or how it just compares to things on this list. So we're not gonna like get into that today per se, but these are questions that I would ask. I'm not saying it's terrible. I know it's reputable because iShares is reputable, um, but we wanna see like, why did it lose so much money last year? I don't know. Um, I also want to compare it to other things. If this lost money last year, did all REITs everywhere lose money? If so, then okay, right? It was just a bad year for this particular type of investment. So these are the questions I would want to ask. These are questions I want to know um, before I would say, is it good or is it bad? All right, so hopefully, Tyler, that answered your question. And also hopefully it gives you guys like a, a think out loud of how I kind of go through things. So even if, even if a, an investment lost money is not always the, the worst thing in the world, it is okay. This investment lost money, but what is it? What am I comparing it to? So the, the watch list that we came out in Q1 from January to March, when everything was falling apart, um, we only lost 5%, whereas the entire market lost 20. If I'm gonna lose, I'll lose the 5%. I'll take that. I don't want to lose the 20. Um, so you want to compare with that particular investment did, was everything down that year or was it just this one? And if so, why? Equinix is actually one of his top holdings, which makes sense. Um, but sometimes I'm sure if I click here, it'll show me what those top holdings are, which is sometimes why you, you want to pick and choose. So yeah, Equinix is a part of it. DLR, which is one that I like, is a part of it. They got some, some ETFs I know. Um, but here's the thing. Let me move me out of the way. It's only 7% of it. 
close to eight, and it shows you the percentage of all of them, but essentially 93% of it is not that investment. And that may have been what, what brought it down. I don't know. Um, we also know that Equinix is a part of it now, or as of June 30th, we don't know if it was a part of it a year ago. There are ways you can figure that out. Um, but again, I don't know. I don't know what, what happened in that year, but that's something again that we can, we can look at. All right. So yeah, um, hopefully that helps. And again, this is when I'm thinking out loud, when I sit down and look at different investments, look at different ETFs, these are things that I ask and there is much, much, much more digging to do as to how I figure out whether this is something I want to invest in or do I wait and come back at a different date? Um, so all of that, the, a, a lot of the stuff I just taught you or just went through is inside the investor's toolkit. Um, it's something that you can save and come back and something that's updated. Um, and I show you a, a very quick and easy process, give you a list of questions. You actually have a step-by-step -step investing guide inside the course. Um, so you want to make sure that you sign up for it as soon as you can make sure that you hit the share button if you have it and then make sure you use the discount code invest three, two, one, that, that code is above. Um, so you can get started. You save $200 by doing that as well. All right. So that is it for me today. I will see y'all tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. I think tomorrow's Thursday. I don't be knowing what days it is anymore. Uh, um, so anyway, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for sharing and I'll see y'all tomorrow.